Hello, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can draw something on a map adding data. So we're going to go through adding markers, uh, adding windows, info windows to those markers, and also adding uh, clustering, which is something particular. And then we'll see where we go there and see what we can actually do with those information. So just to get started, um, this is the app already running, but I want to go back and run um, because I need to show you that I will just add them one by one. So in order to create markers in the map, we need we will need some location in the map and to display a marker on the map, we can go through the location and add a marker, which is a, a composable function that accepts several things. One of them is the um, the state, which accepts a marker state with a position, and so my bad sorry here should be lock so if we run this we will see that we're gonna display those five location on the map here on the device and those are the five location but adding the markers alone this way won't do anything especially when the user will tap on one of the marker it will just center the marker on the screen without doing anything else so in order to do something else, we want to add something more. So I moved the location outside. I created a class, which is a marker data, pretty simple, that has a location, which is a lot long, a title and a description. And then instead of using just a list of lot long parameters, I created a list of marker data that has that and every one of them has a location, a title and a description. And then the same way we did before, inside the composable function of the Google Maps, we will iterate through our list and create a marker where the state is the same as before with the position and the location but now we also have added a title and the snip set so both of those in the marker composable function the snippet it's nullable and also the title is nullable so you don't need to define them but if you define them then it will add context to the markers in the map. And as you will see now when running the application, um, if we tap on a marker, other than centering the marker on the map, it will show a small label with the title and the snippet below. So this is how you add some data into the marker. Another thing uh, that we can do on the markers is create a custom window so customize this window of information and to do so we need to add a few more data so what i did here was adding a resource id which is nullable and add to for every of the marker data that we have in our list an image which I added into the project here as you can see those five images and then instead of using the what we had before was the marker composable but now we want to move into the marker info window content that accept the same parameters are the, as the marker because if you if you see if I copy this here and here it will simply do the same thing if we import the composable function you see everything works as fine 
but this marker info window content allow accept a, consumable, a composable function as the last parameter, which is the content. And this content is displayed inside of this window here as soon as the user tap on the marker. So here we create a column and we add the title, the description, if there is a description, and the image, if there is an image. And just to demonstrate this, I will just remove the marker, run the application once again. And as you can see, the behavior is the same. If you tap on a marker, it will center and it will display the um, info window that we created and customized as we wanted. So for every one of them. To dismiss the info window, you just need to tap outside or not on, the, not on another marker. There we go. And that's how you can customize the window. You can remove the maximize for the width. You can completely remove this one if you want to and run it. Uh, if you, I don't know, uh, if you want to change the image size to be smaller and then there you go, it will be quite smaller and the window will be basic, will basically adapt to the content. There we go. And I don't know, maybe you want to add something to the image. Uh, maybe you want to clip it to a circle shape of, well, if we have 100 dp here, we can have a 50. What did I do wrong? Uh, sorry, we need a rounded rounded corner shape with a 50 dp radius and now you'll see that the images will be clipped with and they will basically be circles instead of there we go you can also change the what is it the uh, content scale of the image if you want to um, instead of a crop you want to be I don't know fill bounds maybe it's a bit better it will be stretched somehow but this is just to show you that you basically can customize everything and it will the, the windows itself you have completely complete control over the window that's being displayed and say that the let's say that the Tower of London has a too long content description, so we could theoretically place it to now. And now, if we tap on it, as we have a protection over nullable values, the description won't be shown in the Tower of London. And the same goes for if we remove the image for the Buckingham Palace, we will see that the image won't be shown, we will just have the title and description. Got the wrong one, and this should be the Buckingham Palace. Here we go. Now, let's roll back everything, go back to GitHub, and go ahead. And now, for the clustering though, we need to add something more in our project. What we need to add, we had the implementation of Google Maps for Compose, but we need the utils library as well. I think I already had it. So, yep, I have the Compose utils library, but you need to add this line into your build gradle in order to be able to use the clustering. So the clustering is a little bit tricky because it accepts a collection of items and your collection of items need to extend the interface cluster item. So what I did 
in our marker data class. I, ex I extended the cluster item interface. This requires you to override those four function, which is which are get position, get title, and get snippet. And once you do that, you need to provide those three things. Those are used inside of the clustering function to basically populate the map with the, the map with the markers. So this is how you provide. And now you see that the on cluster click and on cluster item clicks are two functions that provides you a cluster of marker data. Uh, of course, you don't need to specify this, but you can get the cluster if you need to. And here you can get the cluster item, which is of marker data. So the faults here are to tell the system that we didn't handle the click on the cluster and the cluster item and that it needs to propagate it. So if we now run this with the data are the same, so we still have the same marker, marker data with the same uh, drawables and so on. And this is the clustering. So if we zoom out a little bit, you see that the cluster is being done. And if we zoom out a bit more, there we go, we will have five clicks. Sorry, I did a double click now, but if you specify false and false here and then and don't do anything there when you tap on a cluster it will just be centered while if we set it to true it means that we handle the click and we don't want the system to do anything with the click itself so you will see that if we have the far uh, the five item cluster which is not centered in the screen right now and we tap on it nothing happens so we don't want this because we want the system to still do something useful for us, which is centering the cluster item. And same here. So when you click on the item, um, the item, the cluster item is actually the marker. So if we tap on it, we want to, we want it to behave the same way. Now you've noticed that even if we have marker data, that should be shown here. The only thing that are show that is shown are those ones. Uh, I currently don't know if there is a way to customize the info window for clustering. I will take a look and let you know down in the comments. So now that we did this, uh, let me revert back to this one as well and go to the latest thing that has. Um, what we need to do if we want to zoom in when the user taps on one of the cluster item. So you can see here that the Google Maps accept a camera position state, which is a camera position from lat long and it has a zoom value as well. So what we can do here is on the cluster click. So when the user see the cluster item, which has the number inside of it, we can We'll go with the camera position state and move it. And the move function accept a camera update. And we can have a camera update factory. And there are, you can basically zoom in, zoom out. You can see, you can set a new camera position or you can set a new lat long. And you have, you can scroll by, zoom by, zoom by, zoom to, and whatever. What we will do is just do a zoom in, which is usually enough to tell our map to zoom in in order to expand our clustering. So we will see, we see now that we have the five items. If we zoom out a bit, we, we should, we should have the four items. And if we zoom out a bit more again, we will have the five items. Now, if we tap on the five, it will zoom in just enough to detach one of the items from the clustering. Now, if we tap on the four again, it will center on the fourth and zoom in enough to decenter the clusters for the markers from the cluster item. Now, a thing that I forgot to do 
is to show you that you can customize the marker composable function a bit more. And one of the things that you can do is So the title should be data.title, then we should have the snippet, which is the data.snippet. And then another thing that you can change is the icon, which accepts a bitmap descriptor. Now you can create one with the default marker, or you can create something similar with a default marker that accepts a hue and this hue parameter are predefined here so you can basically use the constant now if we run this one you will see that all the class or all the markers in our map have a different have a color which is the azure so there you go now, if we want to add it, we could, for example, instead of, since it's not, right now it's not used because we don't have a custom window, or we could actually use it, we can go with a cluster icon hue, which is a float, and it's now by default. And we could, for example, um, which is actually wrong because it's not a cluster, but it's a marker icon hue. So let's say that we want to customize four of them. We can go with hue azure one, one we can go with green, and we can make one violet maybe and one is the red which is the default so we want to go with where well, we have azure green violet and let's go with rose and now here we can set the data marker icon hue but since it's not since it's nullable because it's not defined other, otherwise we will go if it's null we will go with the default one which is hue red now if we run this application here we will see that we will have different class different markers color on the map everyone with its color another thing that you can go with is provide a bitmap an asset a file where you need to specify the file name a path pin config or a resource those are all the options that you have to customize your marker on the map so this was just a quick example of how you can customize your markers color on the map and that's it for today's video I hope you enjoy and I hope that you learn something that you didn't know how to do previously if you want me to go deeper into the clustering composable function and see what can be done, for example, have the same different colors inside the clustering or maybe have the info window inside the clustering or anything that you want me to do, please let me know down in the comments. If you like the video, click the thumbs up and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.